As mantis. Wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are the those who of the parlor director, always so generous! Come on, let's go! Oh, so that's how it is. Thanks for the suggestions, Mr. Zhongli. I have them all noted down. I've long heard that your knowledge encompasses all things old and new, Mr. Zhongli. But I never knew that you were well-versed in the art of cooking, too. It is truly an honor to make your acquaintance. No need for formalities. I, too, feel humbled to be in the company of such talented young people. There are many things I could learn from you. Oh, you flatter us. Um, if it's possible... May I trouble you to provide a few words of guidance for my practices in exorcism? Exorcism? I can't say I'm an expert in the field, but if you don't mind, we could start by discussing... Oh, there's so many people here! All we knew was that hotel invited Zhang Li over. Paimon never thought we'd be meeting so many old friends! <laughs> Happy Lantern Ride, everyone! Likewise. Please, take a seat. Right. Are you having fun? Me too. I've seen Shinyan perform before, but this is the first time I've watched something like this. I heard that the audience loved it too, and she's been receiving quite a lot of performance invitations lately. She's more busy than ever. Yep, and they asked us to pass on their season's greetings to everyone. They hope we'll have a wonderful gathering. The performance was spectacular indeed. However, it gave Xiang Ling a huge burst of inspiration, which in turn gave us a bit of a headache. Us? Did Xiang Ling ask you to try out her dishes too? <laughs> that, my friend, is beside the point. Watching you eat was enough for me. <laughs> Come to think of it, I probably shouldn't have burdened Chong Yun with eating my share too. Hold on, Xiang Ling came up with a new recipe? <gasps> Let Paimon try! See, someone here knows how to encourage people. Thanks, Paimon. Oh, and I have to thank Mr. Zhongli, too. He gave me lots of useful pointers that really drove it home for me. Oh, so that's what you were talking about before we arrived. Yes. Since we'll be dining together, the topic of our conversation naturally revolved around cooking. Zhongling's ideas are truly unconventional. Her choices in both ingredients and spices are comparable to a melody dancing on the tongue. My suggestions were nothing more than the icing on the cake. Oh, the two of you always deliver. <laughs> now I'm getting embarrassed. Anyway, I'll get everyone to have a taste after I've adjusted the recipe based on Mr. Zhang Li's advice. Hmm. That sounds like it might become a little safer to eat. How about I sample the dishes next time? Speaking of eating, Paimon feels like we're missing someone. Oh, Huta was the one who invited us, but she's not here. And... where's Guoba? Oh, the Guoba volunteered to help Dad at the restaurant. You know, lots of people come over to eat during Lantern Rite. Without Guoba helping out, I probably wouldn't have had the time to accept Hu Tao's invitation. As for Hu Tao... The director went to collect a guest. She asked me to stay here and host you for the time being. Seems like it's almost time. Huh? Hu Tao went to fetch someone in person? 
Oh, that must mean they are super important. Could it be... Kuching? Ningguang? Or... <gasps> Captain Beto? She didn't clarify. And as her subordinate, I couldn't just pry into the details, could I? Ta-da! We're here! Oh, we're not late to the party, right? Right? Good thing the Conqueror of Demons and I are both as swift as the wind. And whoosh, we made it just in time. Oh. I see. So the important guest is the Conqueror of Demons. I've been looking forward to meeting you. The Director didn't mention anything when she invited us. What a pleasant surprise. Gathered here with us tonight are not only young and accomplished individuals, but also the protector of Leo's peace, Adeptus Alatus. To convene here with all of you is indeed a great honor. Uh... It's almost lantern right. Yet you took all the trouble coming here. <sighs> the director has a way of making it difficult to decline. Rex Lapis, may I ask what troubles you? The director asked me to buy sesame oil in preparation for the celebrations. Huh. Then why would you come all the way to Wangshu Inn? I had a pleasant chat with Chef Yen Chao and received some spices from him. And? See? Here's some matsutake and a portion of ham. What about the sesame oil? Hmm. It's a shame. I couldn't find the kind the director was looking for. I'm sure you're exaggerating, Zhang. <clears throat> Sir. Uh, there he goes again. Enough with the pleasantries. Go let our guests take a seat. Everyone here today is well known in their own field and has probably heard about one another to some extent. Some of us are even old acquaintances, so there's no need to be this formal. I heard that the Conqueror of Demons and the Traveler are pretty close, no? Great. You two sit together. You should take a seat too, Director. Oh? Finally remembered me? When we arrived just now, the host at Xinyue Kiosk told me our dishes are almost ready. Perfect timing. Let's not wait any longer and ask them to bring up the food. Paimon would have never guessed the person who Tao went to fetch was Xiao. Oh, that's also the first I've heard of the Traveler and Paimon being friends with the Conqueror of Demons. You know Xiao Chu? Knowing is a... Bit of an overstatement. I've always looked up to him. You might not know this, Paimon, but we exorcists have worked in close collaboration with the Conqueror of Demons for many generations, dispelling evil together, both in the open and from the shadows. Hard to imagine that thanks to Hu Tao, I've finally gotten the chance to meet him. Conqueror of Demons, I'm honored to make your acquaintance. Likewise. It is a great honor indeed to have a chance to meet the legendary Conqueror of Demons. Chang Yun has brought that name up quite a few times in the past. I remember you mentioning wanting him to understand the importance of exorcists. Ahem. Uh, we know each other too. He helped try my dishes during the masterful chef's cook- <laughs> I didn't think we'd have the chance to meet again. No anecdote, however, compares to meeting you in person. I'm Sing Cho. Xiangling and Changyun's friend. Whoa, everyone's getting all formal and polite all of a sudden. Uh, Paimon doesn't know what she should say anymore. Uh, Adeptus Xiao, mighty conqueror of demons. Please accept Paimon's greetings too. Belated happy lantern rite. Paimon tried very hard to look for a fancy word, okay? Don't be too harsh on Paimon. There's no need to be so polite. You're right. This was meant to be a nice little get-together between friends, after all. Too much formality kills the atmosphere. I didn't plan this gathering only for everyone to walk on eggshells. Hiya. What's your true intention, then? 
A little get-together between friends, sipping the finest tea and watching lanterns float into the sky, bidding farewell to the past and embracing the present with joy. And that is something our consultant would say. I think it deserves a standing ovation. Indeed. Exceptional acting skills, Director. As for me, I'm just here to have fun and treat everyone to something good. We all worked really hard this year, whether traveling or guiding, cooking, helping with the family business, exercising evil spirits, or conquering demons. And of course, our consultant, who's been helping out at the parlor every now and then. Everyone has done some pretty amazing things. As the one who brought everyone together, it goes without saying that I'm the one most deserving of praise. Huh? Sounds kind of self-important, but... Paimon thinks it's pretty amazing that she managed to talk Xiao into coming. He rarely ever enters Liyue Harbor, after all. It wasn't as complicated as you think. Okay, gotcha. Thanks, boss lady. Uh, it's not boss lady, just boss. <sighs> and there she goes. What a lively girl. Conqueror of demons, Adeptus Shao. Guardian of Wangshu In, hero of Dihua Marsh. I know you're there. <sighs> Quiet. Do not disturb the peace. Sorry, but you wouldn't show up if I didn't yell your name, would you? I know you. You're the 77th director of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Is there something you need? <laughs> that does sound like one of Hu Tao's antics. Did the Conqueror of Demons agree to come so that Hu Tao would stop pestering him? There might be other reasons. <laughs> Smart guess. Huh? There's more to it? It gets pretty boring from here on. I talked about the funeral parlor's past relationships with the Guardian Yakshas. You know, just to be sociable. In the time of the Archon War, disputes were frequent, and disaster overtook the land. Humans couldn't escape from the torment of the plague, nor could they escape death. The Adepti vanquished the demons, the Millilith fought valiantly, and Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor was responsible for purifying the diseased and sending off the spirits of the dead. That is how the border between life and death was maintained during the war. And That's right. One point for the consultant. But despite our deep-rooted connection, it still took me quite a while to actually convince him. You know him pretty well, huh? This matter is out of my control, so I need to be cautious. True, but I've kept that in mind, too. That's why everyone here today is in one way or another acquainted with elemental power. Besides, it'll only be for a short while as we dine together. There won't be any lasting consequences. But I didn't expect there to be so many people. There's no need to worry, Conqueror of Demons. We're not feeling anything unusual so far. Our young exorcist over here is protected by his pure yang energy, so he's probably the most resilient. Th that's not the same. And did you just toss your carrots into my bowl? Hey, don't look away. Huh? What? I'm siding with Chong Yoon. I saw that too. You're lucky Guoba isn't here today. He hates seeing people being picky with their food. If he'd seen that, He'd definitely make you eat all your carrots. Huh? Guoba would do that? Is he that uncompromising? Hmm. But now that I think of it, Shangling told me that Guoba used to be the stove god. <laughs> it sounds like you've heard the rumors. Hmm. I'm doing fine. Not long ago, before Lantern Rite, I met an old friend. Thanks to his help, things have been a lot more stable than before. You should know him. He's... Whoa. Whoa. 
Seeds of story brought by the wind. And cultivated by time. Uh, did Paima just unconsciously complete that saying? That voice. Could it be? Hmm? If I'm not mistaken, there's someone knocking at the door. Oh, don't just sit there, Zhongli. Go welcome our guest in. No such need. I'm coming in. <laughs> you finally let me in. Hello, hello. No matter if we've met before or not, this moment marks a brand new encounter. Old friends and new, happy lantern right. Oh, it's the tone deaf bard. <gasps> oh, <laughs> he seems to carry a valiant breeze wherever he goes. It looks like we're going to be friends. Fate has brought us together, so come on, take a seat and be my guest. Help yourself. Oh, I'll ask them for another set of cutlery. Mm-hmm. This young lady here is as bright as a fresh bouquet of flowers in the morning's rising sun. She no doubt is the one with the most authority here. Whoa, these dishes look amazing. Is it really okay for me to join in? <laughs> All right, I'm digging in. Huh, it's you. Oh, isn't this genuine? Hmm? Jen Yu? Uh, yep. Now that I've taken a closer look, you're a fan of Jen Yu's works, aren't you? I met Sing Cho at a light novel convention. Ah, oh, <laughs> how I wish we'd met sooner. I never expected that there'd be another person in this world who could interpret Jen Yu's new novel as thoroughly as I could. Venti. You're being too humble. Considering your poetic talent, your fundamentals are way more impressive. <clears throat> Could this new guest be Master Singcho's friend? Yeah! <laughs> Xiao, you remember me too, right? We had a chat not long ago. Yes, yes. Monsters become more active than usual as we get closer to Lantern Right. I was patrolling Dihua Marsh a few days ago, when I happened to run into this... this... Hmm? You've already forgotten? I'm a bard, remember? And bards go around singing wherever they like. Oh, right. And this bard was performing in Dihua Marsh. It was a... moving melody and it made me feel relaxed and at ease. I couldn't help but stay and listen. <laughs> Thank you for your patronage. I understand now, too. I'm Zhong Li, currently working at the Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. It's a pleasure to meet you, new friend. Mm-hmm. And I'm his boss. Oh, and if there's anything unsatisfactory, let me know any time. That's very considerate of you. Oh? Hmm. No wonder. Only a boss as savvy and reliable as you would be able to hire such an impressive consultant. <laughs> oh, you're too nice, Venti. Not to brag, but our consultant truly is impressive. His knowledge extends across the stars in the land, and there's nothing throughout history that he doesn't know. From the sophisticated way he speaks, it's hard not to suspect that he could very well be an adeptus in disguise. <laughs> Xiao, you're an adeptus. Do you think it might be possible? I... Sorry. I'm only good at conquering demons. I'm afraid I don't have much knowledge in that matter. Uh, really? But Paimon thinks you're super knowledgeable. Huh? Oh, oh! Right! Uh, Xiao's a warrior! He doesn't come to the city very often, so it's, uh, pretty normal for him to not know anything. Yeah. Eh? Really? I've actually heard a few things about Mr. Zhongli before. The guests in the tavern talked about this refined and courteous man who, instead of having wine at Mondstadt's finest tavern, ordered a cup of hot tea with the most complex name. 
Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that there indeed is a musician like yourself in Mondstadt. I've heard that he's elegant and amiable, his works witty and vibrant. It's no overstatement to regard him as the best bard in Mondstadt. <laughs> now you're making me embarrassed. I would say that Mondstadt's poetry is a little run-of-the-mill sometimes. There's one I heard a while back that went, <clears throat> The old house is renewed, welcoming the spring breeze, awakening old memories. The meaning's there, but the word choices are unimaginative, and there's a distinct lack of literary flair. I think so, too. The composition needs a little jazzing up. If I were to give it a go, I'd make it... An old melon on a vine, a new flower that grows fine. Oh, good one! It feels unique and has a nice ring to it. You have great taste, Bendy. I was right about you. Let's shake hands. Of course, of course. Hmm. Uh. Hey, Xingcho. Hmm? Mind lending me a few books when we get back? Pick out some well-written ones. I don't know if it's my own lack of literary knowledge, but I couldn't tell the difference between those two. I don't think it's your fault. Chung Yun's right. It's not our fault. Oh, you have a point. But speaking of, why is the tone deaf bard here? Are you here to take part in Lantern Rite 2? I heard that Liyue will be hosting a Lantern Rite music festival this year. As a musician myself, how could I possibly resist the temptation to come take a look? <laughs> or a listen. Getting to know other musical styles is essential to sparking inspiration, don't you think? As for the Fontaine friend who hosted the festival, I saw him near Stone Gate the other day. The Iridescence tour has finally been held successfully for once, so I had to congratulate him. Don't think anything of it. By the way, I was watching as you entered Shinyue Kiosk, but no one seemed to notice me. Should I say that it's because I'm an expert in hiding, or that a certain someone deliberately ignored the sound of the wind? <laughs> Whenever Lantern Right comes around, Liyue Harbor becomes bustling with activity. People are all busy watching the lanterns and strolling around the shops, and they might just go travel somewhere on a whim. It is rather difficult to predict another's whereabouts. The festival is in full swing and proceeding smoothly, and we're all gathered here with friends, new and old. This is no doubt a wonderful occasion worth celebrating. To come together with all of you at the beginning of the year, one can't help but be filled with joy. In a moment like this, I propose we raise a glass together. In my case, tea in lieu of wine. Uh. Very well said, Mr. Zhongli. That was exactly what I wanted to say. Uh, now I'm getting a little self-conscious. I didn't cause you too much trouble barging in like that, did I? We usually drink wine during occasions like this over in Mondstadt, but since Mr. Zhang Li insists on drinking tea, I'll give a toast with tea too. Everyone, thanks for the treat. You're welcome. As the host of this gathering, I hope everyone enjoys the food and drinks. May this year be better than the last. Considering that everyone may have other matters to attend to later, sticking to tea seems like a good idea. Uh... Uh, all of a sudden, they started proposing toasts! Should... should we? What's with the urgency? <sighs> sure. Have you two finished eating? It's always nice to have a breath of fresh air after a meal. Helps with digestion. Um... Uh... Paima will come too! Uh, yeah? Okay then. Don't forget to come back!
It seems like our new friend is an expert in wine. I deserve no such praise. I only drink for fun. It's nothing compared to your expertise. I'm glad we're only having tea today. What if I got drunk and said something nonsensical? I'd surely become an object of ridicule to someone I've just met. No such thing. I wouldn't dare disrespect the director's guest. About you and Venti. Uh, <laughs> Could he be a partner in your family business? That's right. You know how my family is. A lot of business secrets can't just be divulged at the dinner table. Ah, just as I thought. Did she talk about anything interesting before we started the meal? Anything fun I missed out on? Oh, we were talking about cooking. Mr. Zhongli told us that he went on a trip to Chaoyang Village the other day and got a hold of some uncommon ingredients. Tea seed oil and sesame oil. He suggested I try using those in my new dishes. Oh, no wonder he left his post for so long that day. Those ingredients would be difficult for anyone else to find. I guess I'll need his help next time as well. Let's depart. You go ahead. Are you all right? I... It's hard to describe. It's not that. There were those among the Adepti who loved gatherings and idle chit-chat. Sometimes they would call up a few others for a drink. Even I got dragged along to their gatherings many times. The Adepti all have their specialties, making most of them proud and arrogant. Everything they say is straight from the heart. It never gets too complicated, but this time... No, no. I didn't mean that. So you know his true identity. I'll get straight to the point then. The Animo Archon is a free spirit. And his temperament is as carefree as the music he plays on the flute. It's easy for a god like him to live in harmony with humans. And that's something I might never be able to do. Hmm. That does sound like something you would say. No matter. I know my circumstances. Whenever I think of the ordinary conversations I've had with you, it feels... strangely novel. Yes. The parlor director went out of her way with the invitation so it was difficult to turn her down. I had made mental preparations before agreeing to come. She told me that all the guests today would be acquainted with elemental power, and I knew that you would be here, but I didn't expect the other guests to be... General Capesis always said that we should live in the present and enjoy every pleasant surprise. Perhaps that's what I should do with what I'm feeling now, but I think he meant designing clothes for those around him. The clothes were intricately designed, but inconvenient to wear. Brother Bosatius never tried to hide his distaste in front of him. Rex Lapis did like his designs and even collected quite a few. The outfit he wears now was also designed by General Capesis himself. I never saw him wear this during the war. I didn't expect him to start wearing it later. Oh, here you are! Um, I'm not intruding, right? You're not. What is it? A uh, hotel saw that everyone's done eating and asked the staff to bring out the desserts. Paimon got so anxious that you weren't back yet that she scarfed down her dessert without the usual slurping and munching. And to be honest, I was kind of worried too. You looked a little restless just now, and I thought you weren't used to the food here and was planning to head back to Wangshu Inn for something Yan Chao made. You're worrying too much. Why would I? Anyway, let's head back. Please wait! There's another reason why 
I came looking for you. Here, take these. I brought them for you. Almond tofu? Yup. Since the Masterful Chefs competition, you could say that Yen Xiao and I are not only competitors, but good friends as well. I visit him at Wang Xuan sometimes to discuss our cooking. I heard him say that the esteemed guest on the roof loves nothing more than a good plate of almond tofu. So I learned a thing or two about the dish from him. I'll be honest, before Hu Tao invited everyone, she secretly came looking for me, told me about the guest she planned to invite, and asked me for some suggestions on what she should order. So I made a few servings of almond tofu for you guys in advance. Take them as a token of gratitude for your support. When I told Guoba that I was making these for you, he started eagerly running around the kitchen and helping a lot, too. Thank you for the trouble. There was no need to... I'll take them. Thank you. And Guoba, too. You're welcome. Oh, the almond tofu I made probably tastes and feels a little different from the type Yen Xiao cooks. Please let me know if there's any improvements I should make. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Alrighty, we should head back now. We can't keep Paimon waiting. You're finally done whispering secrets to each other? So much for promising Paimon you'll be back soon! Hm. Ha! How could you say that to Paimon? <sighs> In that case, besides having no sense of time, Paimon will let you know what having no sense of fullness looks like. Your dessert is all Paimon's! Sorry to keep everyone waiting. No worries, we're all just chatting here. There's no serious business to take care of. Whether we're chatting outside or inside, it's all the same. Hmm. Paimon's too busy eating to talk to you. But even though we're all well acquainted by now, I think this festive gathering deserves something ceremonious. Oh? Is this some local custom? Nope. This is something I made up so that good luck will be on our side. That's all. Spontaneity is the best choice to make here. Um, let's use this incense burner on the table. It's been lit for so long now that the incense is running out. I'll leave refilling and lighting the incense to the most distinguished guest among us all. Lighting the incense will signify continuous growth and prosperity in all our endeavors in the new year. I see. Perfect symbolism, as expected of Hu Tao. And speaking of the most distinguished guest here today, I'm sure we all agree that it's Mr. Zhang Li. I'm not very familiar with the details of his past deeds, but chatting with him has been a real eye-opener, even for a bard who has traveled all across the world. If knowledge were a form of power, one could even say that you're a wielder of unlimited strength. But when it comes to having a way with words, the notable bard is certainly one cut above the rest. I just happen to have a good memory. It is such an unexceptional skill, yet you made it sound like an unparalleled talent. I am truly impressed. Since we all get to nominate someone... Mm -hmm. I think it's only fair that we let the parlor director light the incense. Huh? That won't do. Don't flatter me just because I'm your boss. We are looking for the most distinguished guest here. As the host, I shouldn't be involved in this discussion at all. Now that we've enjoyed this table full of delicacies, how about we let our one and only chef here do the honors? Um, is this really the way this works? I didn't cook any of these dishes. It's not a big deal. Just look at her! Xiang Ling, the disciple of an adeptus, the stove god's best companion, the winner of the Masterful Chef's competition. 
the only heir of the famous one mean restaurant. A good old friend of mine. There's no better choice. <laughs> uh, why does Paimon feel like we're back at square one again? Please stop! You're making me embarrassed! If we're looking for a distinguished guest, surely the second son of the Feiyun Commerce Guild counts? It's one of the largest commerce guilds in Liyue Harbor. Huh? Don't get me involved in this. Oh, not a bad choice. With the Commerce Guild's young master lighting the incense, we're all sure to make a huge sum of mora in the new year. That's not how it works. Making a fortune is indeed a fine wish, but it's of lesser importance than good health and happiness, which means we should choose Chong Yun, the skilled exorcist who keeps everyone's home safe from evil spirits. Huh? Now you're nominating me? I can't be the one when we have the Conqueror of Demons right here. Adeptus Xiao has the most seniority among everyone here today. We should... I refuse. I am most certainly not the most distinguished guest here. You should all be able to make the right judgment based on your observations. One person here is well acquainted with everyone else. Oh, that's right! Even though you're always mocking Paimon, you're still pretty popular with other people. No, wait! Paimon said she wouldn't talk to you again! Huh? Who else is there? Huh? Huh? Does that mean... Paimon's the most distinguished guest? Oh, well, that was unexpected! <laughs> I agree. Paimon's just the one we need. Without a friend constantly by your side, a long journey would become dreadfully lonesome. But once you have someone there to brighten up the atmosphere, everything along the way will become lively and vibrant too. Ah. The Traveler has traversed many nations and left behind a great deal of fascinating stories. But without Paimon, they would have become quite monotonous. Paimon plays an indispensable role in making your journey a happy and smooth one. You guys! Paimon's not used to being praised like that! Uh, those were genuine compliments, right? Thank you. You made Paimon wait for a long time, but Paimon's not mad anymore. Don't take everything to heart, Paimon. Friends tease each other all the time. Hmm, that is indeed true. That means Paimon is as important to the Traveler as Guova is to me. Looks like we've come to an agreement. Any objections before we proceed? I trust the Traveler's judgment. Then Paimon it is. And now, the world's most excellent Traveler's greatest companion, guide, and friend, Paimon, will be refilling and lighting the incense for us. Here you go. Take the match, and uh, don't burn yourself. But if things go really wrong, here's the two-for-one coupon. It's getting late. I won't take up any more of your time. You're all free to go as you please. Yep, the tea was amazing, too. You don't have to go all polite on me. Just remember to come when I invite you next time. Hmm, let's see. It's dark out, so I'm going to accompany Xiang Ling, Sing Cho, and Chang Yun back home. As for the rest of the guests, I'll leave them to our consultant. No need. I'm headed towards the harbor to meet a friend on the ship. There's no need to trouble one such as Mr. Zhang Li. I think you know the place I'm talking about. Come meet me anytime. 
It was great getting to know you all. Let's meet again when the spring breeze begins to blow. Bye. Oh, we should write poetry together sometime. We'll catch you all later then. Don't forget to return to the parlor later. There's something I need you to do. Understood. See you later. <sighs> well then. Rex Lapis. Just Zhongli will do. I live as a mortal in Liu Harbor now. I am just one among many who begin work at sunrise and retire to rest at sundown. If we were to consider status and seniority as Zhongli, I should be respectfully referring to you as Adeptus Shao. Ugh. Heaven forbid. <laughs> I meant what I said. I heard that during the Lantern Rite Music Festival, you conferred with Streetward Rambler and Cloud Retainer. I take it as you've gained a lot more knowledge about the past? The same truth will sound different coming from different people. As more bear witness to a story, feelings and interpretations expand in variety too. I once had a pleasant chat about the past and present with a Sumeru scholar named Soraya, and learned a few things about her research topic. From the evidence she found and the conclusion she made, her area of research is already very close to the truth. But there are multiple sides to humans and gods alike. In the legends recorded by humans, some gods were depicted as arrogant and condescending, while others were kind and capable. But whether to me, Streetward Rambler, Cloud Retainer, or younger Adepti such as Shao and Ganyu, those Adepti and gods that may seem extraordinary to humans are something more akin to close companions. This was as true back then as it is right now. Just how Shao may seem unapproachable to most, but the Traveler has proved otherwise. So there's no need to dwell too much on certain things. Rex La... <clears throat> I mean... Zhongli, what you're saying is... It looks like you understood what I meant. Ah, the director asked me to accompany you on your return. But I don't think you'll need my protection. I'll be taking a walk around and admiring the night scenery. After that, it'll be time for me to go back and meet up with the director. Goodbye for now. Bye, Zhongli. Everyone's gone now. Paimon always feels a little empty inside when a lively celebration ends. But at least you always stay by Paimon's side. No, no, no. Paimon got it mixed up. Paimon, the best and most distinguished travel guide, will always stay by your side, traveler. Hm. Good that you're aware of that. Shell, is there anything else you want to do? We could take you on a tour of Liyue Harbor. No need. I've stayed here for much longer than I had expected. The city lights are a fine sight. But it's time for me to leave. The events of today occurred so abruptly. I appreciate your kindness. Okay. I'll... see you next time, then. Thank <laughs> you.